Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon. Um, I will be demonstrating an, on airway ultrasound. Uh, to start off the session, I will show you the nobology of the ultrasound system. We have with us today the Mineray MX7. Uh, this is one of the latest systems that Mineray is offering. Okay, so we're going to probably uh, okay, start the system. Okay, before that, uh, some of the probes that's available. Uh, for those who are new to ultrasound, I guess for those who are using ultrasound, probably this, the initial part of the demonstration will probably not be uh, so relevant. Uh, we have the curvy linear probe. This is higher frequency, so lower frequency with higher penetration. Uh, the linear probe that we are going to use, higher frequency, um, lower penetration, better resolution, and finally, we have the face array or the echo probe, which we will not use it, mainly used in the uh, echo examination. So again, using the linear. And uh, for airway, it's linear until proven otherwise. Okay, let's start the system. Okay, we are going to choose the probe. So when we have, chest, when we have uh, chosen the probe, uh, in this system, there are presets. So presets are basically um, settings uh, of the machine for a particular examination. I've tested two, thyroid and superficial, and we thought the superficial would be probably the more appropriate one for this ultrasound emission. There's no airway uh, preset. Okay, so to start off with, we've put some gel there. It's important to note orientations. Uh, by default or by convention, we will put the marker on the patient's right in the transverse scan as well. Uh, and when we do a longitudinal scan, we put it on the cap flat. So again, we're going to test it. Usually, this is what we do with a bit of gel. We, uh, it will correspond to that particular marker. OK. So we've got a bit of orientation. So another, another two uh, important things that we need to do is also set uh, the depth. And we need to set appropriate depth. We have a lean model, so uh, I've uh, scanned, scout scan just now. We're probably going to need about three and a half to three centimeter. Okay, we can actually deepen it further. Uh, usually about uh, five is the optimum for most of the uh, linear probe. Okay, but for this particular demonstration, we're going to use three. Um, we can, you know, make it a bit more superficial, but uh, we won't be able to see the deeper tissues. Another uh, important uh, setting that we need to consider is actually the gain, okay, which is um, changeable with this eye touch. Okay? So the gain is actually technically the background noise. So when you increase the gain, there's more noise, the image gets brighter. When you reduce the gain, less noise, the image gets a bit darker. Okay, so choose the appropriate probe. Make sure the orientation. Uh, the depth as well as the gain. I think uh, that's, uh, those are the three mo more, uh, most important points uh, if you're using this, uh, if you're new to the ultrasound system. We have uh, a model here with us today. Uh, Kaikal is one of our staff nurses here. Okay, um, positioning. So this is probably important when we do uh, ultrasound. Uh, probably for not so much for procedure guidance, but uh, when we do ultrasound, um, trying my best to uh, probably in most situations to do it from the right side of the patient, but actually you can be quite flexible. It depends on where the machine is and how mobile the machine is and so on. But for today, I'm going to position myself on the right side of the patient and the, the system will be on the left side of the patient. Uh, again, there's a bit of positioning, uh, ideal positioning. Um, for example, he's uh, a fairly lean model, uh, so we don't have much issue. But what we did is also try to extend the neck. Uh, we were using a small uh, uh, headrest here with uh, and a, and a, another possible roll and a roll down here to actually extend the neck a bit so that this gives you a, a bit more view. You can use it just similarly like how we use for you know central line cannulation of the IG and so on, uh, where we try to uh, maximize uh, the area where or optimize the whole uh, area for us to scan. Now uh, we will be demonstrating the basic sonar anatomy of the airway. Okay, uh, again, we are using the linear probe 
and as I mentioned, I will put the marker on the right side of the patient in uh, the transverse view. So I'm going to put it right down on the suprasternal notch. Okay, let's see what we see. Dr. Mafis, my colleague, will be assisting in pointing the cursor. Okay, let's see what we are used to see. We've got the carotid artery, which is pulsating there. I'm moving a bit more lateral. Then we've got the IJ, internal jugular. Okay, coming back to uh, the central point, okay, what we are seeing is actually the trachea. We are seeing part of the uh, thyroid gland. If you could point to the thyroid gland, yes. Okay, um, and what we are seeing now, okay, just point to the air mucosa interface, yes, that is actually where the mucosa is. Okay, and if you see the other lines below it, it's actually artifacts. Uh, these are reverberations, okay, but uh, the first or the most superficial uh, hyperechoic line is the air mucosal interface. Okay, uh, so as we move uh, Keflat, slowly we can see that now the thyroid gland is more prominent. Okay, uh, the thyroid gland is homogeneous unless you are dealing with a pathological thyroid gland. And as you move further up, you will see the various, uh, I would say, tracheal rings, okay, appearing in and out, okay. And as you move further up, okay, can you see the change now from where we can see the uh, thyroid gland and where the airway was actually a bit more circular? Now the, the anterior surface is very flattened. It appears like as if it's box shaped rather than circular. So this is where the what we are seeing now is actually the cricoid cartilage, and where the cursor is actually pointing to the air mucosal interface. Uh, this is uh, basically where the mucosa is, and the rest, the reverberations are artifacts. So this is an important point because uh, when we're doing uh, procedures, we need to know where the cricoid cartilage is. And as you move further up, usually you won't uh, appreciate much of the cricothyroid membrane, but this is where it is. Okay, but the more important structure as we move further keflat, can you see it now becomes triangular in shape. So what we are seeing now is actually the thyroid cartilage and the structures beneath it. Can you see ah? Uh, can you see that? The vocal cord is actually moving during phonation. Okay, so this is the thyroid cartilage and the larynx beneath it. Okay, so just say uh, again. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to um, move back down again from thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, the trachea rings as we go further down and the thyroid gland on top of it. If I move to the left side of the patient, Okay, I'm going to ask the model to swallow. Can you see that movement? That is esophagus, and that's important if we are using ultrasound as a confirmatory tool for tracheal intubation. Okay, so this is the transverse view. I'm going to go to the longitudinal view, which is important when we are uh, attempting uh, or using ultrasound as a guidance for front of neck access. Okay, I'm just going to turn around. So one of the tricks is that if you manage to get this view, the, you try to rotate the ultrasound so that the airway or the trachea is actually still central. Okay. Okay, if you can't get, that's fine. But what you're looking for is something like that. Uh, maybe we can reduce the depth a bit. Okay, can you see this white hyperechoic line? May you point to it? Yes, that is the air mucosal interface. And can you see the rings? Those are actually the hypoechoic rings. Those are actually the tracheal rings. Okay. And what is lying right on top of the most superficial structure is actually the cricoid cartilage. Yes, that one. Okay. And if you move for the keflat, just making sure, okay, when you lose it, the, the trick is it find, when you lose the image, just find the hypoechoic line. When you find the hypoechoic line, you will see the rest of the structure. If we move further up, can you see the, that the, that is actually the cricothyroid ligament. Uh, yes, the cricothyroid ligament and the 
The other structure, hypoechoic structure, is actually the thyroid cartilage. Okay, that one, yes, the, the rest, uh, the, the structure. So it's important for us to know this because uh, this is where, when we want to do front of neck excess uh, cricothyroidotomy, uh, one of the options is to mark this area. Um, okay, I think if we just repeat that again, from the transverse, keep it central, turn it around, keeping the airway centrally, okay, and then you get this. Okay, fair enough, if you are able to get it, when you, let's say you're lost, always find this line. And this is also an important uh, way of telling that the airway is central. Because if you get this um, structure when you are not in the central part of the, uh, in the middle part of the airway, that you know that there is airway deviation. Okay, again, uh, the hyperacuic line is an air mucosal interface. The hypoechoic structures are the tracheal uh, rings. The one on top is the cricoid cartilage, the cricothyroid membrane, and the thyroid uh, cartilage. So uh, we can, if you want to do, uh, which we'll demonstrate uh, in a short while, this we can actually mark it uh, if we want to do um, um, static guidance for uh, front of neck abscess. Uh, going to simulate. Uh, or say partially simulate a situation where um, I will be performing a cricothyroidotomy. So just the, basically to explain the basis of uh, needle guidance, uh, ultrasound needle guidance. Um, so what's important, the first one is actually ergonomics. This is really important. And I, I, with this knowledge also, you can use it, you can apply it to all the other needle guidance, your central line cannulation, peripheral nerve blocks. So when we position ourselves to do uh, uh, ultrasound needle guidance, we need to position ourselves so that operator, the patient or model, and the ultrasound is in one straight line. Uh, we, uh, when there is an element of turning around, uh, the dexterity of our hands will be reduced. Uh, and also try to make ourselves comfortable. If the table is too low, you either prop it up or you use a chair to bring yourself so that you are not bending yourself too much. So I have actually increase the height of the table so that I'm in a position uh, to actually um, uh, be comfortable uh, when I'm holding the probe. For ultrasound needle guidance, um, there are two ways of doing it. Uh, first is the static guidance uh, where we scan, we mark, and then we put the probe away and uh, we proceed with doing the actual procedure. Uh, the other one is dynamic guidance, where it is real time. What we are, uh, we are seeing the uh, image, we are seeing the structures that involve, as well as the needle that um, uh, is in the image, whether uh, it is in plane or out of plane. But uh, unfortunately, this is a model. We're not going to do that. But I'm just going to explain some of the principles uh, pertaining to both uh, static and dynamic guidance. So we are going to put the probe. The best. A uh, point that we want is actually uh, best seen in the longitudinal view. So you can see the air mucosal interface. We are quite central at the moment. Okay, I'm going to stabilize my hand by resting on the patient. This is something that we do in most of the needle guidance. Okay, and if I push my keflet, uh, my probe keflet, can you see uh, the? Okay, so we have seen the cricoid cartilage there. And if you push further up, that's where the cricothyroid membrane is. Okay, so then how do we mark this area? I'm trying my best to push it as much as possible so that it corresponds to the middle part of the probe. It may be not 100% there, but what happens, okay, it's, it's probably just, this is center, so somewhere there. Okay, and the similar thing I will do on this side. Okay, so with that, I have an idea on where uh, the level of the cricothyroid membrane is. So if I put down the probe, I have these two markings on either side uh, of the probe just now. I'm going to make a line and I just mark where the center would be based on the lines I made on the sides. 
So if I were to put the probe down, I would trap the patient, and this is where I will uh, puncture uh, for the cricothyrotomy. Uh, with regards to the uh, dynamic guidance or real-time guidance, okay, we're just going to simulate this with uh, this uh, cap needle here. So, of course, he's very lean, so we don't have an issue here. And in fact, it will be probably counterproductive in doing it in a longitudinal because there's going to be poor access because of his chin here. Uh, but if we do it in the out-of-plane approach, then probably it's the best way of doing it for the cricothyroidotomy. Okay, and this is the thyroid, the cricoid ligament, so the, sorry, the cricoid cartilage. So somewhere in between, this is if you, are have, you have concerns, we need to do this. Basically try to put the cricothyroid ligament in the middle and rotate it. Okay. So this is where it is. And you can approach it in an out of plane approach. Uh, so I think, um, and how to do the specifics is probably beyond of this workshop. But these are the principles when we're doing uh, either static or dynamic guidance. Thank you.